What is going on, investors? Hope the guys are doing well out there. That is right. It is Friday. It's spring break over here at Tether Household. And it's also time for the Fang Stock Recap Show here on the Investor Channel, where every Friday we recap all the major news and the technical chart patterns from all the major Fang Stocks. This week, we had a $100 billion data center rumor floated by Microsoft and OpenAI. Apple is saying that their next best thing is robotics. And we also have a new channel here at the Investor Channel. Close followers of the channels know I was posting my bleeding edge videos here on the Investor Channel. I got mixed reviews. Some people loved it. Some people hated it. And honestly, that's kind of a sign of a good content. Love or hate, what I've decided to do is set up a completely new channel. If you want to see videos from me several days a week, there'll be a link down in the description below and the first pinned comment. I'd love to see if by next Friday we can get this up to a thousand subscribers. So if you could take a moment, help me out, subscribe to this channel. Again, the links are down below and I appreciate your support. Let's kick things off like we always do with Meta Platform Store of the Week at 494 and change. <laughs> the social media giant had a giant of a week. This stock defying gravity up over 6.5%. Finished the week at 526.90. Again, we're a couple of weeks away from earnings on Meta. Now, they were denied by an appeals court to delay an FTC probe into reopening a privacy probe. This dates back to proposed changes back in 2020 where Meta, otherwise known as Facebook, would be prohibited from profiting from data it collects from users under the age of 18, among other things. The FTC is alleging that Meta is failing to fully comply with the earlier order and they're going to come back and slap their wrist a little bit more. It resulted in a $5 billion fine last time. We'll see what the government takes out of Meta and their shareholders' pockets this time around. Now, the company is making sweeping changes to its approach to AI-generated content. They said they plan to start labeling AI-generated content sometime in May of 2024. Previously, Meta removed videos that were either edited or changed kind of it to a manipulated media policy. Well, one thing that doesn't make sense to me is they've got all these filters on Instagram and certainly Snapchat. That's certainly manipulating media. They've allowed that. And I think in the future, a lot of media out there is going to be manipulated by AI one way or another. Moving on to Apple. Start of the week at 170, the iPhone giant. Sliding down by about a half a percent to finish the week at 169, almost 169.69, but one cent lower, 169.68. Apple's February iPhone sales crashed 9% in the U.S. and globally dropped about 4% year over year as continued weakness for the phone. Although we have the Worldwide Developer Conference, I believe it's in June, could spur some interest for some new products. Although that was the story last year for Apple as it related to the Vision Pro. And I hardly see anybody talking about those amazing $5,000 ski goggles anymore. Now, Apple asked TV personality John Stewart, who had a program running on Apple TV before returning to his call to glory otherwise known as The Daily Show on Comedy Central, which is produced by Paramount, ticker symbol P-A-R-A. -A. That stock's been in the news. We've covered that in the Netflix segment. But it looked like Jon Stewart wanted to interview the Federal Trade Commission chairwoman, Lena Khan, who we've talked about several times here on the show. But Apple played executive producer, if you will, and they said, please don't talk to her. And they also didn't want her on the show talking about topics such as artificial intelligence. Now, we've obviously been on here and we're not the only ones that have come on here and criticized Lena Khan. But by absolute no means does that mean she shouldn't be allowed to get on any kind of program she wants and have any type of platform and speak her mind. In fact, I think it's the absolute opposite. You want somebody that you might disagree with on some certain things. It's nothing personal against her, but maybe business-wise as a shareholder, our interests don't necessarily line up what her interests are over at the Federal Trade Commission. We want her to talk. We want her to express her opinions. We want her to share her ideas and what her thought process is so we as shareholders can understand their position, especially if Joe Biden, President Joe Biden gets a second term. Someone like this might be influencing the Federal and Trade Commission for another four or five years going forward. And the more we hear from her, the better. So shame on Apple for trying to control someone else's speech. 
who deserves to be heard. Apple's latest research suggests the tech giant could be an AI, and this says will be. I think it could be. I read through these. Believe it or not, I did read through these research reports. One of the research reports says that Apple has an on-device large language model they're calling, I think, Real M. Everybody's got these cute little acronyms for their GP models. They say it outperforms or has similar performance to OpenAI's GPT-4. Now, this is an on-device rather than a cloud performance. Now, the thing we have to ask ourselves is if we were going to have on-device AI with Apple iPhone, I think that's certainly the future and certainly is going to come probably as soon as the next iPhone. But how is that going to impact battery performance, pricing, memory required, all those types of things? That certainly remains to be seen. Apple said to be looking to personal robots for its, quote, next big thing, as we talked about from the jump, posting bleeding edge newsletters. Now, I have been posting them. I've just been making the videos private. Only subscribers to the actual newsletter have been able to watch these videos. We've been doing them since late last year. One of the things that I talked about as I, it related to personal robotics, after I attended the Consumer Electronics Show in Las Vegas in January, I said the next big thing for a lot of companies is robotics because we we look around the space of robotics there's not a uh, there's not an apple there's not a google there's not a microsoft there's not a trillion dollar incumbent they're standing in the way of innovation every company has kind of a blank canvas if you will and apple certainly looking to do that the great mark german over at bloomberg reported the devices that they're working on not particularly impressive and nothing probably coming very soon but the fact that apple is working on it is interesting. Now, what we are going to see over the next week or two, we always see this as we lead into earnings season. Like we said at the jump, we're just a couple of weeks away from all these companies reporting earnings. Apple will report their earnings, I believe, the last week of this month. What we see is the CFOs are finalizing all of their financials right now, and they're starting to make decisions. We actually saw this last quarter as well. All of these tech companies outside of Apple had pretty massive layoffs or significant layoffs that they announced right before earnings same thing is happening this year. Apple CFO is going through the numbers and they're saying, well, these could have been better if we let go of these 600 employees after scrapping their EV project. Moving on to Amazon, start of the week at 182 and the e-commerce giant just keeps quietly chugging along up close to a 52 week high up 1.55% to finish the week at 185.07. AWS is boosting its free credit program to help startups use the A models and kind of develop AI models like Anthropics and Meta and other AI companies as well. Credits or discount in the cloud computing division, including AWS over at Google and Microsoft, it's actually pretty common. If you have a large enough account, you can negotiate pricing on them. You can get credits. And my guess, we reported on this over the past couple of weeks that Amazon made investments into Anthropic. I would assume it, it might not actually be a dollar figure. It'll be similar to Microsoft and OpenAI. The fact that Microsoft, quote, invested in OpenAI, but most of it is just server and Azure credits. And I would assume same thing is true with Anthropic. It's not actually pulling money out of your pocket. It's simply giving the company the server space to operate their business. AWS is cutting hundreds across different teams. Physical stores are also impacted. As we said with Apple, the CFOs of these companies are starting to go through the first quarter numbers, getting them finalized for their respective earnings calls and earnings reports and the company making cuts. Amazon did this last time and Amazon's report was amazing. Okay, it was a fourth quarter as a holiday shopping season, but the company printed a huge, huge operating cash flow line and operating profit line if the company is able to do that again and right now the stock market is betting that it can well my call that amazon might surpass apple in market cap might happen sooner than later now amazon is shelving technology that i was excited about when i first saw it this just walk out technology at many of its grocery stores 
simply has not been able to perform. And it's surprising considering the advancement that we've seen in vision computer modeling, uh, thanks a lot to artificial intelligence and just the vast computing power that is out there. Amazon had these stores where you could just walk in, grab some stuff off the shelf and walk out. But what they found was it, it just simply wasn't working. The company had to have physical employees monitor the transactions and make sure what was getting taken out was being charged for. And it just simply didn't work. Moving on to Netflix start of the week at 610 and the streaming giant just chugging right along up over 4.2% to finish the week at 636 18. If you haven't noticed, what we've decided to do on the Fang Stock Recap Show is, is have little segments here where on Net Netflix doesn't make a lot of news on its own. And so what I've decided to do is kind of broadly cover streaming media and the movie business. Same thing with NVIDIA. NVIDIA makes a lot of news, but we'll as you'll see, we'll cover the broader chip industry as well when we talk about these individual companies. Just gives you more value to an already valuable show, if I do say so myself. Now, Bob Iger is saying that Disney is going to become a growth business as they spent just so much money trying to grow the subs on their Disney Plus. They spent a lot on paid marketing and things like that. They say they're pull, they're going to pair that back. The other thing that they're going to do is crack down on password sharing. So if you're sharing a password with Disney Plus with a family member, that's probably going to go away. Moving on to Nvidia, start of the week at we'll call that 918 down about 4.25% finish the week at 880. Now Nvidia doesn't report their earnings until later next month, but you will in between there hear from AMD, TSM, ASML, Intel and many others and so it'll give us maybe maybe kind of a blueprint although Nvidia obviously has set itself apart with their GPUs. Now Nvidia TSM reports that there will be no chip supply impact after a massive 7.4 magnitude earthquake in the great country of Taiwan. We are glad to see that for the most part what could have been a very very tragic event and obviously if you if you live in Taiwan and we do have viewers of the channel that live there I hope everything is good. It seems like earthquakes are the flavor of the week. There was one I think today on the east coast up in New Jersey and New York. Stay safe. We fill them out here all the time in California, but I tell you what, a 7.4 magnitude is obviously a big one, but it's good for the chip companies. It doesn't look like a lot of impact. NVIDIA is going to team up with Indonesia to build a $200 million AI center, but I tell you what, $200 million looks like pennies dropped on the ground after a rumor. Microsoft and OpenAI could be eyeing a $100 billion data center project that could come sometime as soon as 2028. To give you some ideas about this, I believe over the past trailing 12 months, NVIDIA's revenue is not even $100 billion. Microsoft is going to spend across all of their data centers this year about $50 billion. This is $100 billion on a single data center. I tell you what, if I'm AMD, Intel, NVIDIA, Broadcom, Marvell, TSM, ASML, I am loving these types of press releases because it means that demand is not slowing down. Now, the Intel Foundry event, this is going to put a chink in the armor of the Intel fanboys, which have completely diminished here on the channel. We've been talking trash on Intel really since the start of the channel. People didn't really get it. They didn't really understand. I think people are starting to realize that my information on the semiconductor industry, while certainly not perfect, I don't have a perfect track record, I'm pretty much batting a thousand as it relates to Intel and their Foundry event. The primary message that many analysts got is there's no real reason to be here until 2030. So Intel, and I, I agree with this sentiment. I think we even talked about it on our last show. There's no reason to be in this stock for probably four or five years. You're just not going to outperform anything. You might as well own an index fund, and you certainly can look at the other semiconductor stocks out there, which have wildly, wildly outperformed Intel. Moving on to Google, start of the week at 154.39. The search engine slipping down about 1.2%. Finish the week at 152.50. HubSpot, a company that is a public company, ticker symbol HU. BS currently has like a $680 stock market caps at about $32 billion. It's a marketing company operates somewhat of a similar business as the, the core business that you've got going on 
over at Google, and it gained on the rumor that Alphabet is considering a takeover offer. I don't think the FTC, the FTC has blocked, as we've seen, like $1 billion offers for vacuum cleaners, and you have Walmart potentially not being able to buy Vizio, which is a HGTV. I, I can't imagine the government allowing this to go through, but I, I guess it's potentially a possible. If you look at HubSpot, what is interesting is the company spends a fortune on sales and marketing. In fact, the company is not profitable. For the year end last year, the company had total revenues at about $2.2 billion. That was up from about $1.7 billion the year before. They've got massive software-like gross margin. I mean, they basically spend nothing on that. So their gross profit off of 2.2 is $1.8 billion. That's what has Google licking their chops because company spends over a billion dollars on sales and marketing. Google won't have to do that. You also have a general administrative line at about $250 million. That's HR back office. Again, something that Google can just roll into their existing company. So all things considered, HubSpot actually loses money. In fact, it accelerated over last year. Despite higher revenue growth, the company spent more on marketing and other expenses, including some restructuring charges, Google feels like they probably could roll this company in and maybe eliminate a little bit of competition out there, use its sales and marketing staff and shed this $1 billion. I tell you what, this is like a Broadcom. If you look at Broadcom at Hawk Tan, his strategy over at Broadcom, this is the exact type of company they go after. They go after these companies with huge margins, huge gross margins, but burn through a ton on GNA and sales and marketing. And then they come in there, shed all those jobs and all those costs and all of a sudden you turn an unprofitable company into a profitable one. Now, Google's podcast is the latest product to get booted by Google, although your podcasts are now found on YouTube Music, which maybe is a part of YouTube or maybe a standalone app. I'm not really sure. Now, Google's CEO is making many of the day-to-day -day decisions on generative AI. We have criticized Mr. Sundar Pichai with all due respect. It is business. It's not personal against him, but now... He is the chief product officer as it relates to AI. Now, before the 51-year-old was named the chief executive officer over at Google, overtaking the co-founders before they rode off into the sunset, he was Google's chief product officer. So this is something he has experience in, although I would ask all of you out there, how hard it is it to be a product officer over at Google? Seems to me the product hasn't changed a whole lot. And I'm an old man. I've seen Google since the beginning. Moving on to Microsoft. Start of the week at 426 and some change. Basically flat to finish the week at 425.52. OpenAI is trying to make it easier for enterprise and businesses to create their custom generative AI models. This is going to be a massive market likely for this company and many others, including Google, probably Amazon as well, as companies are going to want to silo in their data, not have some of the maybe woke or just kind of hallucinations, if you will, that these large language models tend to have. Rein them in, make them company specific, sector specific. And honestly, I think that's the future of AI. I think these wide, broad ranging AI models they're going to be far from perfect for a long period of time, but a laser focused AI model on dieting or health and fitness or psychology or legal or finance or anything like that, a hyper focused one probably is a great product. Interesting change here. Those of you that have not played around with ChatGPT, you can now use it without having to log in. Now, it won't give you premium access to premium features, which I think cost $20 a month or so. I am one of the people that do pay for chat GPT. I think it's worth it if you are on there at least a small amount, but you can get access now without having to create an account. Microsoft's test an AI-powered chatbot for its Xbox. I tell you what, <laughs> Microsoft is moving at the speed of a startup and it is impressive for a company that is now the most valuable in the world. And we talked about this in the NVIDIA segment, the fact that Microsoft and OpenAI or eyeing a hundred billion dollar data center project. And I know we're kind of numb to these large numbers as companies like Microsoft, I think are worth well north of $3 trillion at this point, but a hundred billion dollars on a single data center is more revenue than, or a bigger number than almost 
the entire semiconductor industry over the past 12 months. So it, it is gigantic. Moving on to Tesla start of the week at 175 and 50 cents. And it was another really rough week for Tesla shareholders as shares at the EV maker down over 6% to finish the week at 164.90. A lot of it had to do with the fact that you slumped 7% after those Q1 deliveries just missed already reduced expectations. Now, Tesla's trying to explain the miss as they came in with production of the Model 3 and the Model Y coming in at about 412,000. Wall Street was expecting a number close to 440. In terms of cars that they delivered, just under 387,000 cars delivered in Q1, whereas Wall Street was expecting a number closer to 433,000. This was one of the bigger misses that Tesla has really had, and one of the first times that you've actually seen negative sales growth and negative deliveries over at Tesla really since the pandemic. And now Tesla says that they had that arson attack in Gigafactory Berlin that I think took that fact, the entire factory offline. And in fact, Elon Musk made a visit to the factory. I think that took it offline for at least a week or two, although we didn't get any definitive answers on that. You also have in the Red Sea, there's conflict slowing cargo ship through there, delaying some products and key parts. And the company is also ramping up production of an updated Model 3 out of the Fremont factory out here in the great state of California. We'll see if... Tesla is able to gain momentum when it reports earnings again about two weeks from now. Now, Tesla not waiting on its laurels, and I think you got to respect this a little bit as it's on the hunt for sites in India for a proposed 2 to $3 billion EV facility. I think you have import controls or import tariffs, if you will, in the great country of India that really make it prohibitive from a cost perspective to do anything but make the cars in the country. Got to respect a country that makes you come to their country and manufacture something there, and it looks like Tesla is laying the groundwork for that. And the company is also, this is interesting, increasing some vehicle prices as we roll into Q2. So despite the soft delivery numbers and data that they reported in Q1, they are raising prices, which some cases could make you believe some of the declines in deliveries for Tesla could be shorter term. Now we'll get back to Netflix here in a second, but we got to look at the S&P 500, as we could have had maybe a little reversal here. This green line's not drawn in here perfectly, but potentially maybe you topped out here. Maybe we didn't now. We didn't close below the previous lows. The previous lows on the S&P 500 is down here about 5,096. That's obviously a ways away from over 5,200, but you get a close below that. And obviously you're looking for buying opportunities as this uptrend is absolutely smoking hot. Now, speaking of smoking hot, we thought that maybe, maybe we get our chance to buy the dip on Meta. Well, your chance came and went, at least in the shorter term. You confirmed newer, higher highs. The stock is super resilient. Maybe they're in there buying their shares. Maybe there's incremental buyers at these high levels. Maybe there's people that are privy to the numbers that they're about to announce in 19 days. I don't know, but this stock made a very, I wouldn't say unusual move, but a somewhat unusual move to move higher, continuing the shorter term uptrend, continuing the longer term uptrend meta, just looking absolutely fantastic. Moving on to Apple has based out down here at about 160, 170. I don't think shareholders know what to do with this. There's not enough interest in Apple to push it back up into like the 180s, but there's not enough disbelief, if you will, in the shares to dump it down here to a lower range. You get dumped down below really where the stock is right now, and you're looking to buy the iPhone maker uh, pretty quickly. Now, speaking of going somewhere pretty quickly, Amazon is going back to the all-time highs that it made back in, I believe, July and November of 2021. Talked about how it almost seemed like destiny to get there. Looks like to me you're going to set up right at the top and you and the chances are, unless you have broader market sell-offs, you're just going to hover there with Amazon and then it'll be earnings. Earnings will either pop us up like meta and we'll have a big gap and a run or we get rejected here with Amazon. And depending on how the numbers look and kind of the forward momentum, 
uh, you've got some great opportunities. We'll see what happens there. Moving on to Netflix, just same old story. This stock is just looking absolutely fantastic. Micro trend, medium term trend, long term trend. I mean, Netflix is so durable. It's it's actually from a stock perspective, it's absolutely incredible. Now with Nvidia rolled, you know, we did we did say, hey, if you are going to take profits in Nvidia, and some people take offense to taking profits in stocks, which I don't understand. This is not like me saying, hey, you need to have your you need to give up your firstborn child and and not spend a week of time with him. Not asking you to do that. I just said, hey, if you were in this one and you were wondering when you took profits, it was back here on this red candle. We talked about how the multi-year trend, six-year trend or so on this one is telling you, six, seven-year trend is telling you this is where shares will stall out. We made a high, somewhat lower high. Some people might even say a lower high. This is good news if you want to get into this stock because if this momentum continues, if you just look at the broader semiconductor index as well, I was looking at this. I, I look at the SMH. Some people look at the stocks. This also is just looking really extended to the upside. Could you continue to push higher? Maybe, but I wouldn't be greedy. This is an area where I think you look to take some profits not on everything, but, you know, if you have 20 shares, uh, there's nothing wrong with selling one and ringing the register. Moving on to Google. This one looking good. It put We talked about how last week we kind of pushed up to a new high, made a new higher high. It's, it's natural when you make that new higher high to have a little bit of a pullback. Right now, pullbacks in Google should continue to be bought. Same thing with Microsoft. It's looking fantastic. This company reports their earnings in about 18 days. And so my guess is you'll just set up here. And most of these stocks are kind of in this position. Apple's in obviously a different position. Tesla, what we'll get to is in a different position, but most of them are just kind of setting up pretty close to highs. And that's why it's such an important earnings season. In fact, we've talked about that a lot on our Bleeding Edge videos is that the next four weeks, I think are the most important four weeks in the stock market because we're setting up at the top and then we've got earnings. And just doing this for the last several years, I've seen many times we set up at the top of, uh, top of a technical pattern and earnings come and it's just hard to continue to push higher. But I tell you what, the run that these stocks have been on, it's also hard to believe that it is going to end. Now, moving on to Tesla. Speaking of ending, this uh, this still does not look good. Company is still in a massive downtrend more recently. And just more recently, the buyers are just not stepping in at incremental prices. Now, the sellers are drying up or starting to fade away kind of in that 160, 165 level. We are seeing some demand and it is the top of the green box, if you will. We've had these green boxes on these stocks basically since the beginning of the channel, more or less. These are what I would call your buying zones and you're right at the top of Tesla. I personally, I'm a little risk averse. I'd wait 18 days for the company to report their earnings. See if Elon Musk is able to sing sweet music to investors and analysts and turn things around. You're also looking for some kind of push up. I would also, if I bought Tesla at this range and I did see a reversal, I timed it right. I'd shave off a couple of shares, just take some quick profits on this one because until you get out of this downtrend, I, I mean, I, I hate to bring this stock up all the time, but you look at a stock like PayPal, it's just been in this downward trend. It looks like to me, the e-commerce and payment provider looks like it wants to try to poke its head out of this uptrend. So we'll certainly keep an eye on that one. That one's actually getting kind of close to reversing its technical pattern. That's what you need to see with Tesla. You need to see a peak above the previous highs. PayPal's not super close to that, but Tesla is even further away as you have highs all the way up here at 263. That is $100 higher. I don't know what Elon Musk would have to say on a conference call to have things turned around for Tesla, but I guess Elon Musk is the man for the job if there's anyone out there. Folks, that was the Fang Stock Recap Show for Friday, April 5th. I hope you all have a wonderful weekend and a safe one, and we'll be back again next week. You got the Masters, so you know what I'm going to be doing most of the week. Until then, good luck with your investments.